So I've come up with this really crazy idea. Imagine that I don't own any tents at all and I had to start from scratch when it came to camping again. So if I could only choose one tent to take with me on all my future trips, which tent would Paul Messner buy? For camping and backpacking here in the UK. So today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a website, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Paul Messner to get a totally free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So one of the most popular questions that I get asked, what tent should I buy for X amount of money? So over the years, I've owned a number of different tents across a variety of budgets. But knowing what I know now, if I had to go back to the beginning and only choose one, which tent would I actually choose? So I've got myself a bit of a short list together. Again, this covers a variety of different price ranges. And then hopefully by the end of it, we'll be able to narrow it down to one tent, which I would buy for my UK wild camping trips. So I'm gonna start off by looking at tents at the lower end of the price range, at around or under 100 pounds. I've owned a number of tents around this price range, including the Van Gogh Banshee 300, the Van Gogh Zenith 200, and currently I own a Lanshan 1 trekking pole tent, which is about 80 pounds to buy at the moment. I really do like the Lanshan one for warmer weather as it's really well ventilated. But as I can only have one tent for pretty much all year round, I wouldn't choose this one as an option. I personally would go for the Van Gogh Nevis, which currently retails around 75 pounds, weighs in at around two kilos in weight, and it's virtually the same tent as I started off with when I was wild camping. I previously had the Van Gogh Zenith, which is an almost identical design and very similar materials. There's a good balance in the inner material between solid fabric and mesh, so therefore you can get away with it in some of the colder weather. But buying a budget tent would mean that I'd have to be a little bit more selective about where I pitch my tent, especially in really windy conditions. So with that said, if my maximum budget was only £100, I would choose the Van Gogh Nevis. But I do think for a little more money, you can get a much better tent than that. So before we move on to the next tent on the list, I'm gonna throw the question back at you. If you could only have one tent for all your future camping trips, what would it be? Drop me a comment below. I'd be interested to find out what your choice is. So for around 120 pounds, you can get the Alp Kit Soloist. So this tent weighs in at a mere 1.2 kilos. It's got a really small pack size. It's got a silicon coated fly sheet and it's got a decent amount of headroom and vestibule area. If you want to see a little bit more on these tents, check out Border Rambler and Andrew Beavers' channels, as I know both these fellas are happy with how the Alp kit performs. So if you're prepared to spend 150 to 200 pounds, that's when it gets a little bit more interesting for me. I've had a number of tents around this price range, including the Nature Hike Cloud Peak 2, the Six Moons Design Skyscape Trekker, and the Wild Country Helm 2. None of these tents actually make my shortlist though. The first of the three tents that I've picked in this price range is the Roban Starlight 2. Now I've had a go in one of these tents and they're very roomy and they're very well made. It's got a bit bigger pack size and it weighs in at about two and a half kilos, but for that you get some really strong materials. And Robans do wind test this tent to 145 kilometers an hour, which converts to 90 miles an hour before the structure of the tent you know, becomes damaged. I know that Steve from Outdoors Lifestyle has had this tent and swears by it, as well as Ray from Renegade Scott, who's made a few videos on it, which are worth checking out. So next on my list is the Wild Country Zephros 1 or 2. It's pretty much the same design as this tent here. However, it's cheaper materials. This means it's a little bit heavier, about 1.85 kilograms. But the design of the tent is great so it will stand up to the elements. So the next one on the shortlist is another Wild Country, it is the Helm 1 Compact. Now I have previously owned the Wild Country Helm 2, but I've seen the Helm 1 in action a few times in some pretty bad winds, and its actual shape means it is better in windier conditions than the Helm 2. Wild Country have come out with an upgrade and made the compact version of the Helm 1, which have made a great tent even better, in my opinion. I've had a good chat with Hardy about this tent, and he says they've made improvements to the inner of the tent, which makes it less drafty. 
The poles have been made into shorter lengths, so this makes it more compact, so it fits in your pack a lot better. And they've also reinforced the tie out points and around the pole sleeves. So overall, it looks like they've made quite a few improvements over the original Helm one. One other thing about this tent, as well as all the others except the Alp Kit Soloist, is that you can pitch them both fly and inner at the same time. This means if it's raining, then I know that the inner part of my tent is not going to get wet. So for that reason, I've decided to relegate the Alp Kit Soloist. It's not going to make the top three. So next up, we've got the three to four hundred pound price range. But before that, a quick thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So I originally chose Squarespace because I wanted a professional platform to share my ideas, photos and videos. It's so easy to use. I simply upload my images, video links and then some text and the Squarespace templates do all the rest. If I can create a website in an evening, anybody can. So having a Squarespace website has really helped me grow my YouTube channel. I now rank in search engines and it's really helped me develop business partnerships in the outdoor industry. So if you need a professional website to help amplify your message, then why not head over to squarespace.com slash Paul Messner for a totally free trial and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. I think you've got to be a little bit wary at this price range because some of the tents don't actually have much better materials than those around the 150 to 200 pound price range. So the only shelters that I've had around this price range are the Terra Nova Photon one, which I've still got, so obviously I really like it. And the other two are Bivy Tents, which is the Rab Ridge Raider and the Rab Uni Shelter. Both of those are great and I've still got them. I love them. But I don't think that they really qualify as an all year round wild camping tent as they aren't somewhere where you want to be holed up, you know, for long dark nights and when it's hammering it down with the rain. I can't remember the exact weight of the Photon one. It's about 700 grams or something like that. Packs down to the size of a melon and I've used it on a number of trips including multi-day trips like the Derwent Valley Heritage Way. So this one's perfect for those longer hikes but it's still got the Terra Nova build quality so I know I can rely on it if the weather turns bad. But one that's recently caught my eye at around the £350-£400 range is the Exped Vela 1 Ultralight. Now I'm not sure that this is going to be a great tent for summit camps but I do love how versatile it is and all the different pitching options. So you can have the fly half open, fully open. You can even take it down all together so you can just sit and have your dinner. The vestibule area looks massive so plenty of room for cooking in and storing your wet gear. It's got DAC feather -like poles and the whole thing weighs in at only 1.2 kilos. So I think that that makes it perfect for something like a coast to coast trip where your conditions may vary from day to day. If you haven't checked out my Facebook group yet, I'll drop a link below. These photos and video have been sent by one of the members, Ryan. So thank you for that, mate. So the final price range that I'm going to look at, I'm just going to call it over £400. Now this is a massive investment for a tent, especially if you're, you're new to camping and you don't really know if you're going to like it or not. But I'm already hooked, so if I lost all of my tents, it wouldn't bother me, shall I? Well, it would. <laughs> a little bit more money for a tent, and that's something that I'd probably do if it was the right one for me. Chosen three tents in this price range, and they are all Hillebergs. Two of them I've owned myself, so there's the Hilleberg Acto, which weighs in at 1.7 kilos. It's a red label four season tent with a single pole, so it's a tunnel design tent. But the 1200 curl on material is incredibly strong, so it makes it a bit of a tank when it comes to one man tents. Now, I really do like the look of the Enan, which is the lighter weight version, which uses 1000 curl on material. And the inner tent has more mesh so it makes it more breathable and it's perfect for three season use. However, I still think you could get away with it if there was a little bit of snow. It's still incredibly strong and will stand up to the summit camps. So for 1.2 kilos, it's definitely a contender. The only black mark is the price, which is very steep for a tent. So the last tent that makes the shortlist, as you probably guessed, is the Hilleberg Solo. In my opinion, this is the Rolls Royce of one man tents. It's a little bit heavier at 2.4 kilograms, but it's got three 9mm poles and some of the toughest material you can get in a tent, which all adds up to a shelter which can take pretty much any conditions that the UK can throw at it. It's also got more headroom than both the Acto and the Enan at 95 centimetres, whereas the other two I think are around 86. So you might find that helpful if you're a little bit taller. 
So that's it, the shortlist. I suppose I better narrow it down a bit, hadn't I? Well, I've already taken off the Alp Kit Soloist, as it's the only tent that doesn't pitch both outer and inner at the same time. I'm also going to take off the Hilleberg Acto, I've had that already and I did replace it for the Hilleberg Solo, which in my opinion is the better of the two tents, as it's stronger and it's completely freestanding. Next I'm going to take off the Van Gogh Nevis, although I think it's a pretty good tent for the money. If I've only got one tent, it's going to get quite a lot of use and I want something that's going to be durable and last a long time. So sometimes you have to pay a little bit extra for those more durable materials. The problem is, there isn't one tent that suits every application. You're always going to have to have some kind of compromise. Either it's not tough enough, or it's too heavy, or there's not enough space. Right, I've made my mind up. My head tells me that the tent that I should buy is the Wild Country Helm 1 Compact. It's at a really good price between 150 and 200 pounds. It's a freestanding tent, which means that in some situations you could get away with pitching it without pegging it out. It's a good size with plenty of space inside for one. And I've used its bigger brother, the Helm 2, and I know that it's up to the job. And this new improved version is even more stable and compact. But me and me, me, I'm not gonna go with my head, I'm gonna go with my heart. And the one tent that I would choose is the Hilleberg Solo. It's the tent that I've always wanted. I know that I can put it in pretty much any situation in the UK and it'll stand up to the job. The materials are superb and it will genuinely last me many, many years. The customer service from Hilleberg is awesome and if I ever wanted to sell it I know that I can pretty much get my money back because they hold the price really really well. The price now is totally stupid, £790 so I don't recommend anybody buys this tent. But it's my money and I really love this hobby so I'm going to choose what tools I take when I go up in the hills. So if you want to see some of these tents in action click on this playlist here. Hope you found the video entertaining so give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.